there's been growing concern about superbugs that are resistant to drugs and harder to kill. They're expected to cause an additional 10 million deaths around the world each year by 2050. But researchers here may have found a key weapon in the war against such bacteria. Professor Jackie Ying and Dr. Yukon Chang from ASTAR, who co-led the study, are here to tell us all about it. Thanks very much for joining us uh, this evening in studio. Uh, Dr. Ying, uh, Professor Ying, professor, uh, perhaps we'll, we'll start with you. Um, so we mentioned earlier the secret seems to be in a particular kind of molecule. Uh, how did you discover it? And, and tell us a bit more about what it does. Uh, Yugen and I, we have been working on these materials for a long time. This particular polymer has a lot of positive charge in the backbone and that tends to interact with the cell membrane associated with bacteria and fungus. And it will pierce through the membrane and killing the uh, material without allowing it to develop any drug resistance. So the thing about this material that we have recently developed is that it is biodegradable. So it will not be staying around and create more drug resistance after they have done the job. And so this is what we are particularly excited about. Mm. Uh, Dr. Zhang, let's bring you in on the conversation about what started your research in this area. You know, actually we, as Pramit just mentioned, we have been working on this area for more than 10 years. And when I keep hearing the news about civil bird infection, transmission, and also food uh, contamination incidents, that drives me to think about that, how to minimize this issue, address the issue. The concept here, the key point is, we develop a material, material that can kill bacteria very efficiently, yet we are not leave behind any active residues there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the fact that you don't leave behind effective, uh, this residue, yes. um, how does that tie into this overuse of antibiotics, which is widely blamed for the rise of superbugs, so to speak? Mm. So for if you leave behind active residues, then they will basically allow the bugs to develop resistance. Okay, but in this case, you are not uh, using any antibiotics and the material would degrade. So it will no longer be active. Mm -hmm. So once it's done its action, mm -hmm. uh, it, will, it will stop and you will move on to be eco-friendly. And that's the most important part. So potentially, it could be a, a, an alternative to antibiotics, you think? Oh, yeah. We, we really think that's the possibility. In particular, we think that this has a lot of applications. Uh, for example, in treating bacteria and fungus associated with plants and also with aquaculture. Uh, mm. And uh, we also can use it for treatment of uh, bacteria, can clear the bacteria more quickly in terms of uh, healing wounds. So we mm. think this external applications is what we are developing first. For internal applications, um, you will need to go through a lot more steps for FDA approval. So we are focusing on uh, things that I think will very much involve um, creating something that's eco-friendly. Mm. Mm. So how long might that take though? Because you've said mm. that it's taken you about a decade uh, to come this far uh, in terms of turning this into a reality, ah. something that uh, we could see in commercial use. What can we anticipate? Sure, actually uh, maybe we should clarify. We, we have been working on these materials for a, a 10 years because first of all, we use it to develop some very efficient catalysts so completely different application. And then we were looking at them for anti-fibrotic, anti-cancer application. Yeah. So the antibacterial part was definitely but more isn't recent. Isn't that always, I mean, it's very often yeah, the case, absolutely. isn't it? You're and I think that one thing that's you, absolutely, yeah. that's the exciting mm. part about doing research at ASTAR. I think we have a lot of multidisciplinary groups um, working together. And I'm a, a bioengineer and Dr. Zhang is a synthetic chemist. So groups like ours will work together and collaborate mm and across different entities within ASTAR and also with, um, with uh, hospitals and the university as well, then we are able to do something very unique and we are excited about that. Uh, Dr. Chang, perhaps tell us more about where the research is at right now in terms of execution. Um, how long before we possibly see um, clinical uh, trials perhaps? When is this going to go commercial, if that's even possible in the near term? Mm -hmm. Actually, as uh, Profin just mentioned, we are more targeted to the topical or environmental applications mm. at the moment. Mm. Mm. So for this type of uh, applications, actually, um, basically we are already ready there. We just need to do more uh, real application tests. Mm. Yeah. So it's very likely that we will uh, create 
spin-off company like we did in the past uh, to try to commercialize this mm. technology. We very much want to capture the value of for the research that's been done in Singapore. Mm. Mm. And it's important, I mean, you mentioned earlier yes. that this is a non-toxic solution, it's biodegradable, biodegradable as well. Mm. So yeah, tell, give us some t context about uh, the importance in, in, in its application. So you need it to be potent in order to kill the bugs, right? And yet you don't want it to be left a, a, around for extended period of time because then bugs might get, you know, develop resistance against it. So that's the beauty of something that actually is biodegradable. Right. Mm. Fascinating mm. research, and we wish you all the best Thank you. Uh, in bringing this uh, to uh, uh, you know to the to society. I mean, I guess you know, aquaculture, agriculture, uh, those mm. sectors are going to benefit a lot from it. We've been speaking there uh, to Professor Jackie Ying and Dr. Yugen Zhang from ASTAR.